At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. And welcome back. Here's your news across Nevada with Deanna O'Donnell. An initiative to impose a 2% business tax had its first hearing before Nevada lawmakers. The Assembly and State Taxation Committees held a joint hearing on Tuesday on the education initiative backed by the State Teachers Union and other support groups. Supporters claim it would raise $800 million a year for K-12 through grade education. They collected more than double the number of signatures needed to keep the initiative alive. If lawmakers don't pass it by March 15th, it will automatically go to voters on the November of 2014 ballot. Passes by the legislature is unlikely. The tax would be assessed against businesses making more than $1 million a year. Critics argue that the initiative doesn't guarantee more money for education. Nevada officials say they no longer are recognizing concealed weapon permits from Arizona after the state relaxed some of its training requirements. The decision takes effect this week after a unanimous vote last Thursday from the Nevada Sheriff's and Chiefs Association. Association officials say Las Vegas firearm instructors first notified them about the changes in the training requirements. Nevada Department of Public Safety officials say they contacted the Arizona Department of Public Safety and confirmed changes were made in the 2010-2011. Those include adjustments to the minimum training requirements and the elimination of statutory marksmanship and judgmental shooting requirements. Association officials say the requirements are now too different from Nevada's for the state to recognize the permits. Nevada would revert to a presidential primary instead of a caucus system under the bill introduced in the state Senate. The main goal of SB 212 is to allow military personnel serving overseas an opportunity to participate in the presidential nominating process. Under the bill, the primary election would be held in late January every four years when the presidency is at stake. Nominating elections for state and local races would be held at the same time. That would push candidate filing season for legislative and other state races from March to the preceding October. The provision in the bill would authorize moving the primary to early January if necessary to ensure Nevada is the first in the West to cast a presidential preference. Lawmakers are considering a measure to include transgender persons in the list of protected identities in Nevada's hate crime statute. The measure, SB 139, went to the Senate Judiciary Committee on Monday. The crowd spilled into the overflow room and down the hall and featured no opponents to the bill. The bill adds gender identity or expression to the list of race, color, religion, national origin, physical or mental disability, and sexual orientation. If jurors find a crime was motivated by one of these qualifiers, the offender faces an additional charge carrying the possibility of 20 years in prison. The severity of penalties for attacks on transgender persons, they hope, will curb some of the often most gruesome violence against people of that identity. Is another foreclosure tsunami about to sweep through southern Nevada? It looks like the region might be in for round two. But this time, there may be some opportunities. Real estate ep experts say there are recent signs that buyers and sellers need to be aware of. Notices of defaults have tripled in the first two months of the year compared with last year, while 2012 was a slow year for foreclosures because of the state law requiring banks to prove they had the right to foreclose. The increase could alter market dynamics. More defaults and foreclosures could help with the shortage of inventory, but the increase in the rate of defaults combined with the possible end to the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act at the end of the year has local professionals saying 2013 is the year to act. While short sales and foreclosure sales have dominated the market in recent years, the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors reports more homes are being sold now through traditional sales. These sales accounted for more than half of all local home sales in January. I'm Deanne O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. The Prompt Mini Burning Man event has been canceled. According to a press release issued today by the town of Pahrump, the Mini Burning Man event, which was set for Memorial Day weekend, has been canceled. They received a phone call from the board of Burning Man yesterday from Mr. Schmidhofer, who said that their board had decided to cancel the event because they had addressed four different items and they didn't think that there was enough time to resolve these. The Burning Man board unanimously voted yesterday to move the event back to Boulder City. The items that they list are they were disappointed with several board and public comments received at the town board meeting on February 19th. Most importantly, that this item had come back to the town board twice before the final decision could be made. The Burning Man board also read blogs around the town of Pahrump 
and were concerned and upset that they were being called drug users, Satan worshippers, nudist freak shows, and so on. The Nye County Air Control Quality Board also told Mr. Schmidhofer that they must obtain a dust control permit, which would most likely require them to place two inches of gravel on the property where vehicles would be traveling and or parked. The Nye County Sheriff's Office representative contacted Burning Man via email and advised them that everyone who was going to be giving away alcohol at the event needed to obtain a liquor permit. They also listed that it is common practice at Burning Man events to give away alcohol to people who are of age to drink. The town also added that they understand the concerns of the Burning Man board and they're hoping that they can resolve these issues in time for the 2014 event. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Well, last year, New Hope School closed its doors. The church, New Hope Church, has decided to make use of the facility, which was the school for a recreation center. The large building with indoor and outdoor amenities is almost ready to go for the community to use free of charge. They are currently still looking for volunteers and any donations of table games, board games, and anything that might be useful for kids, adults, and families to utilize at the facility. This changed because the school closed and it was just sitting here collecting all kinds of items and it was like almost a storage room and I asked um, the pastor if we could um, turn this into a recreation center. So we tore out volunteers, tore out the carpet and put in new floors and um, did the painting. I didn't want white walls, I wanted colorful. Yeah. And this is going to be a recreation center for the whole community. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yes, it's a recreation center for the community. Growing up, I was in a recreation um, environment. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here, nothing, mm -hmm. you know, unless you have to pay for it. Yeah. And this will be um, no charge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, donations are always welcome mm -hmm. um, for new games, new all kinds of equipment. What's going to be great is that you have outdoors and indoors and families can come here. The adults can come, play basketball with their kids, um, play some air hockey here. You would have a computer lab. Yes, we have a computer lab for senior citizens or anybody that doesn't know how to use a computer. Mm -hmm. This is beginning. Mm -hmm. This is to show how to turn them off, turn them on, how to plug them in, how to do everything with um, the computer, mm -hmm. how to get online. Um, we even help them get an email address. Mm -hmm. So that you, you have running on what nights right now? Um, right now it's on Tuesday nights and it's um, six o'clock to eight o'clock and um, we're getting ready to start a another session in two weeks and we go five classes then we take a break five classes take a break and um, it's me and a girlfriend from church a friend from church and um, whoever else we get to help with the aid mm -hmm. sometimes we have standing room only mm -hmm. This will be part of this rec center too, if kids want to go use the computers when you're not doing the, um, the classes here? If they have an adult to work with them on a project, mm -hmm. it's just not free to go over there and use it. I have somebody talking about doing some tutoring. Um, so I told them my room is open. We just have to get permission from the pastor. So this area right here, New Hope Fellowship is looking for um, any donations, any volunteers um, to come and help out getting this going. What's your projected opening date? Um, we're planning to have it open by the end of this month. Also, you have this uh, covered area over here with a complete playground. Yes, we have a playground for small children. Um, you know, we need to use it. That's why it's here. How can they contact you for more information? Um, they can call New Hope, or they can contact me by email at ctswan at sbcglobal.net. There you go. And that's also the same address or email address if people would like to get in touch with you about the computers? Yes. Yes, also with the computers. If they can figure out how to email. <laughs> yes, that's true. 
Nye County Sheriff's Department will be competing again this year in the Baker to Vegas Relay Race. The 120-mile relay from Baker, California to Las Vegas is the largest law enforcement involved event in the world. The relay has 20 stages with over 8,000 runners entered into the race. Just putting on a run to benefit, to benefit the Nye County team for the Baker to Vegas. This is the first year that you guys are kind of uh, doing a run to uh, get ready for this. Uh, tell me why. Um, because the entry fee costs like $2,500 and it's hard to go around and ask for donations. So we thought putting on a run would, you know, kind of support the community. So people like to run, so it benefits them and us. Who's all participating in this run today? Um, this, there's a few people from the sheriff's office that help set up the track and I think I'm the only one that ran in it, but there's a lot of other people with the sheriff's office going to run in the Baker to Vegas team. How many participants did you have today? Um, not that many. Um, I was kind of disappointed in the turnout. Maybe I didn't advertise it enough or whatever, but we're having another one with the coalition on the on March 23rd. And is that going to be here at Mountain Falls too as well? Yes, it's going to be at the same spot. So they're predicting a more, um, more people come here. Is that going to help uh, also as well the Nye County Sheriff's Center fee? Yes, they are gonna. Some of the money is gonna go to the Knight County uh, entry fee as well. And uh, the Knight County Sheriffs have been running for what three or four years in the Baker to Vegas. I think this will be like the fifth year. Okay. Yeah. And then, if people would like to donate, can they donate to the Knight County Sheriffs entry fee? They can. Um, just make the check payable to the NCLEA or um, give the check to me with NCLEA, and I'll make sure it goes to the right place. And they can call the sheriff's office to do that. They can. Tell me a little bit about uh, the 5K. How many miles is that? It's like a 3.1 mile. And uh, how long have you guys been training for this? I've been training it for it since probably after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a few months. So if people would like to join the Nike Community Coalition, well, can they do that? Can they? Yeah, they can join it. They can call the coalition. I don't know the number. Or they can come on the day on March 23rd and register that day. And that's going to be here at Mountain Falls at 8 a.m. too as well? Yes. You know, there was a phone call about uh, people thinking that New Hope Church had closed, mm -hmm. and it's not actually the church. The school has been closed for almost a year, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, that whole yard and the whole school area has just been uh, sitting there, so it's going to be a great recreation center mm -hmm. now. Well, coming up after the break, we're actually going to have a series for you with Dr. Eric about heart-healthy diets. Mm -hmm. 